Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today we're starting on a project um, because of a local shop closing, owner retiring, and I'm picking up his work, and I can't lift it. It's too heavy. Too heavy to manipulate, too heavy to handle. So we're going to start building a fixed gantry crane. Um, so it'll be a gantry crane without the wheels, so you can't move it around because I really don't have the clearance in here. So it's going to be set up with a post over here coming up, beam across, and a post there with double trolley on it. So let's get the material inside and get started. pieces cut and drilled in the three-quarter inch. This is a base pad for the wall over there and a, as I was saying earlier there's a drain hole I put on top and bottom just a breather hole. That's uh, I feel that's necessary. I've seen these built without it and they start getting moisture in somehow and they start rusting out in the bottom. So a way to get that moisture out, allow it to get out, to breathe, I feel is key. Um, and that's my personal experience. I could be wrong. Um, and so this is that one for over there. That one with the larger base is the one that's going to go over here. That's kind of freestanding there. So that one's going over there. And then we got our top pieces sitting on the other end that'll be going on there as well. Now, we're going to use these triangular magnets to get it positioned as best we can for welding. 
I've got it sitting up on two inch blocks or bars to give me my distance, my two inches offset, so it'll sit perfectly. But before we even start that, we gotta do the prep work. Gotta grind a chamfer all the way around, grind this so that when we weld, we have good material we're welding to for good contact. Um, that's key to welding. Uh, welding is 90% is prep work. If you don't do the prep work, your welds are gonna be garbage. Um, and that's where they'll fail. If you gotta do the prep work. So let's get started on that, get the grinding done and, and uh, start on, on the welding. Okay, this is really not a good thing. When you're grinding, right there, earplugs. Right now, my ears are ringing pretty bad. I'm pretty stupid right now. Um, but you know what? Now I can't hear the wife nagging. Maybe that's a win. But uh, earplugs. And when welding, too, earplugs are, are very nice. So I'm going to put these in and go back to grinding. Okay, so we're all ground up. Got even this plate. We ground the mill scale off of it. Got it nice and clean. It's sitting up on two inch risers, um, two inch bar stock to give me my two inch offset. So that's a 10 inch plate. This is a six inch box beam. Um, the design of this, um, I spent quite a bit of time talking to Doozer from Doozer's shop. He's got a channel on here. I'll put a link to his channel below in the description. Um, him and I worked this out, figured out all the, all the specs on it and got a, got a plan together that's gonna be um, way heavier than what I originally wanted. So the, uh, thank you, Doozer, for all that help. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to show here is how to get the plate on there as close to square as you can get it, and then we'll tack it on. Um, we're going to, as soon as this is all welded up, good and solid and cooled off, we're going to throw it on the boring mill and face everything off true to the, to the side of the column. So we'll indicate off the column and then mill the faces so that everything is absolutely true. But we're going to start here. I'm going to take our plate, hold it up there. Now, tape measure. And I've got these little square magnets. They're little, look like an arrow. Those are going to help you out. And it'd help even more if things weren't rolling around on me. But, so we'll get that first one there. And just measure it out till we get it where we want it. about centered there, put my magnet on, now we're going to double check it, and we're going to double check it a couple of ways just to see where we're at, and we are a little off, I was told my steel supplier saw was perfect and it is far from perfect, so now we need to compensate for that. Get it as close as, as we possibly can. Now we're good this way. Put a magnet there. Well, this direction will be a little harder to hit and I might go find a different square, but we got to get it square all the way around before we tack it. So I think I'm going to go find another square, get this finished up, getting it square, and then tack it into place.
All right, so I got this thing all, all squared up where I want it. I got my magnets holded in place. It's as square as I can possibly get it. Now, the next step is to tack weld it in multiple places and keep checking the square. You might have to tap on it to get it to stay put, but you really got to just take your time. Um, like I said, once I'm done, this is going to go on the boring mill. We'll mill it flat and true to the column, and that'll uh, take care of that. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, this hose here. This is a, a pretty nice thing. It's uh, called the Miller Cool Belt. And what it is doing is blowing cold air or cool air down in front of my face. And it actually helps to blow some of the, the nasty smoke and stuff out of the helmet as well. It's not a respirator. It's not sold as a respirator. Um, it does help though. So I do use it for that purpose when I get into some of this stuff and I've been using it when I'm hard face welding, hard face wire. Um, that's a flux core and it's really nasty but the problem with these cool belts is uh, my brother used to call them the fart sniffer. He worked in a place that had had cool belts and supplied air hoods and if you are gassy you get it right in your face. So not a good thing but so just avoid the lining kugels and the pickled eggs in the bar and you should be okay. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a couple tacks on this and, uh, and we'll check all our squareness and see what we, do, what we get, where, how it holds up. Luckily, it looks like nothing moved on me. Everything's holding pretty good. I got uh, about eight good tacks on there. Um, and uh, so now I'm going to just try and I'm going to do a little bit longer welds and just see if it moves on me. And if it doesn't, if everything's good, I'm just going to go ahead and finish putting everything together and, and finish this one up and then weld that end and then move on to the other one. And the other one, because that longer plate, that one gets gussets out at the end as well and that'll give us our stability so it can't when it's this way it can't do this so I'll uh, start some longer welds and we'll uh, see how it goes So there it is. That's the one for the short wall. With our mounts up top. The other one was we moved it over here where it's going to go for a test fit just to see. And the floor is not perfect over here. You actually need to, um, I think I'm going to have to do some, some work on the floor. But we're going to throw these up on the boring mill. And... Uh, on our next video and do a do a video on, on milling the top and bottom faces. So we'll get them perfect to where they'll work well. So with that we're gonna end here. Um, next time around we're gonna like I said be up on the boring mill and mill these things. I'll show the setup. Um, I know everybody's been dying to see the boring mill run. Um, haven't had any work for it lately, so haven't really used it, but uh, now, now we're gonna use it for this project, and this will be a great project for it. So um, with that, uh, I just wanna th again thank Doozer of Doozer's shop. Um, I'll have a link to his channel below in the description, along with a list of items that we use here in the shop. Um, and I've used before, um, just some inexpensive tools that you guys can, can uh, use yourself to, to help grow your shops. Um, it's a good starting point until you can afford to get into better and bigger tools. Uh, this is all stuff that I've used personally at some point in, a, in time, 
or when I needed something in a hurry that was cheap um, just to finish something up. So it, th there's a list of those below, links to them on Amazon. Check them out, um, purchase them if you'd like. Uh, this was all, let me fill you in here on the welder, this was all welded with a Miller CP300 uh, wire feed welder. Um, I was running uh, 27 volts, 045 wire, and C25 uh, gas. So runs runs good. It's a good welder. I've also got a CP200 that uh, I've got set up right now for um, uh, flux core hard facing wire. Because I got a job where I do a bunch of hard facing. So um, Millers are great welders. So if you ever get a chance to get a Miller, especially these old three phase machines. You can't go wrong. They out weld the single phase machines. I, I've run a lot of these welders. The single phase machines will not keep up to these three phase machines. Just make a much better weld. So if you got three phase power, pick one of these up. They're awesome welders. And with that, I think we're going to end here. And uh, like I said, next time we'll get on that boring mill. So uh, you can visit our website, www.toppermachine.com. And please like, subscribe, and share our channel, share our videos. Stay with us and uh, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time. <laughs>